You know, it seems like there's a day for just about everything these days, and today is an important one in the world of science. It is National DNA Day. The scientific achievements that have helped prosecutors solve countless criminal cases, including a history-making case recently in Queens. It is National DNA Day, recognizing genetic science, revolutionizing our understanding of the human body and its inner workings. The ever-improving technology reshaping what we know about medicine, our own ancestral history, and criminal justice. And for law enforcement, it's a tool proven vital for unlocking mysteries of crimes dating back years or even decades. In Queens, late last year, a history-making conviction, solving the case of a missing World War I veteran using forensic genetic genealogy. It's the first successful application of using this type of technology in the city of New York. Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz says it all started with a tip. We get a phone call a few years ago that says 45 years ago, I remember my mother's uh, boyfriend burying a body in the backyard of my home. Bones buried for more than 40 years, finally unearthed by investigators. A corpse decapitated, clearly a crime, but who was it? Somewhere, somehow, someone knew that, that their relative disappeared 45 years ago and they had no closure. The initial DNA profile could not identify the deceased man in local, state, or federal databases. So the Queens District Attorney tried something different. Advanced testing known as genetic genealogy. They brought in a private lab and the FBI, hoping that someone from this man's family may have submitted their own DNA to a public database. And they got a match. We approached the relatives and said, hey, did someone you love or did someone in your family go missing 45 years ago? Relatives confirming the victim as a World War I veteran seen here in an age progression photo, identified as 81-year-old George Seitz, last seen leaving his house for a haircut in 1976, a regular customer at the defendant Martin Mata's barbershop. Apparently, Seitz had between seven and $8,000 at the time he vanished. He was always a little bit uncomfortable in putting everything into a bank, so he carried around all this cash and he was killed for that cash. We traced it back to the local barber shop, and it turned out that the owner of the barber shop is the one who killed him. It was a very strong case we had. He actually ended up admitting it and plea bargaining. He's now doing 20 years. That suspect now doing 20 years in prison, and the Queens DA said he admitted to it in the end. The Queens District Attorney, Melinda Katz, says she's hopeful the technology could be used again, specifically by the cold case squad she created within her office at the moment. We're told there are around 60 cases that are all actively being investigated. Certainly, the technology is not available for every single one of those, and those cases are at various stages of investigation. Yeah, I mean, the fact that some of these families could find closure after all this time. Potentially, absolutely right. Yeah.